Hey, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're gonna get a little techy and talk about PDMs and why I've chosen to run one in this car. So come along. Yeah, I've had a couple people message me about what is a PDM, how I adapted this chassis harness to the, the PDM and Deutsch connectors and all that. And I realized I never really actually kind of went into depth. I kind of just glossed over everything. So we're gonna get a little techy in this video and talk about what a PDM is, what you need to think about if you're gonna do a PDM and stuff like that. I'll try and make it simple as I can because I know how that kind of stuff can get hard to follow sometimes. But before we do that, I did want to talk about a couple things. GTO content, gonna be slowing down for a little bit. I, uh, I maybe screwed up the ECU in a rush. So gotta wait for that to come back from repair. But the good news is wide body WRX content is coming. I'm bringing the car back here this weekend to start working on it. So we're gonna get some WRX content, which I know I'm excited for. A lot of you seem like you're excited for, so look forward to that. But, all right, let's get into the business. So those of you who don't know, I have a Haltech Elite 2500 running the car, the engine, a Haltech PD16 PDM running the chassis. So the first thing I wanna do is just kind of run over what's normally in a car. So this is a very crude wiring diagram of I'm gonna call this a pump. It could be a water pump, electric water pump, fuel pump. It's all basically the same. We have our battery, we have a relay, we have a switch, and we have two fuses and the pump. These are grounds. So power comes out. You have to have two powers on your, your relay, one to energize it and one for the switch. A lot of times you can just run one wire here. Um, depends on the load, obviously. But for right now, let's just call it two. You have the relay's fuse and you have the fuel pumps fuse. So power comes in. This gets energized when this switch trips to ground, which completes the circuit for the fuel pump. That is how most basic systems work. Replace the pump with say a headlight. You know, there'd be two headlights there on the same circuit. Headlight switch would turn it on. That's how that kind of works. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about the PDM and why it's a superior thing. So this is a PDM. We have a battery, PDM, a switch, and a pump. There's one big power wire that comes to the PDM. It's got a fuse on it. These are usually, you know, it's like a main engine fuse, so like 100 amps. So what happens, the PDM gets all this power from this, this right here. What you do is you just have a, you pro, these have to be programmed. PDMs have to be programmed. It's, it's basically a, another computer, you know, I mean, it is another computer. So what you tell the computer is when this output goes to ground to send power to the fuel pump, boom, on. So in this PDM is fuses for the circuits and relays for the circuits. It's all built into it. So we get rid of these and this and an extra wire. Well, technically two, because we don't have either of these wires anymore. So it really simplifies a lot of it. And mind you, you can also program this like, let's say you program it like with parking lights, I want all the headlights on, you know? So like it, it basically would do one, one switch for a bunch of outputs. You can program one switch to do multiple things if you wanted. So that's why it's, it's far superior. So like we could do another one. This is, this is literally exactly how it would be. Let's do a, a headlight, they, a bulb, where they kind of, Look like this. So what you would do is you would have another switch or a program, whatever you want. And you'd have this split to each headlight. Boom. No fuses, no relays. They're all solid state built internal in this. So now we'll go look at it actually in the car. Now, mind you, my wiring is far from complete on the interior. I just kind of got it up and running. I'm like, hey, I want to drive this for a little bit and come this winter, I'll actually uh, finish up doing the wiring because there's a lot of extra wires that can, I bought a, a uh, like a premium harness from Haltech that's basically has everything and you just need to wire it yourself. So there's extra stuff that I don't need. So here, here's the PDM. Power comes into the battery right here. And these plugs are inputs and outputs. So like all these up here, 
these are all the ones that go over to my my cluster which we can go over there and we'll talk about that real quick so now if you look i have deutsch connectors here none of these are actually to the factory stuff we still have the factory connectors the reason i put a little like sub harness in here is if there's ever a problem in one of these wires that needs to be repaired i'm not trying to repin it and do it up here i can just fix it down here it's kind of just like a, a little bit of a service serviceability thing these are our headlights i'm not is it? Yeah, these are turn signals, sorry. We got left turn signal, right turn signal, high beam. So this will turn, it'll ground the system, ground the system, and it'll ground the system. That's how that works. So we can take another look at the headlight here. Yeah, so we got a ground wire. We got this signal for the running lights and signal for the headlights. I hope, I'm hoping all this kind of makes sense, you know, it's, It's hard to really explain. It's like under the dash, I, mind you, I have no heater circuits or anything either, but there's no wiring except for like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, like 12 maybe wires going over here. And some of those are for uh, the gauges too. That's part of the factory chassis harness I haven't removed yet. It's just, just chilling in there. Yeah, so the biggest thing that you're gonna run into if you do decide to do a PDM on your car is how many circuits you need. So you're gonna have to map out, do you want your power door locks to work? Do you want your power windows to work? Do you want a radio? I have pop-up headlights, these have to function. We're still programming these because we're trying to figure, figure out how to do it with these specific type of motors. Um, do you have a sunroof? Do you have power mirrors? Like, you have to figure all of that out and how many amp loads those things are gonna have. Cause like my Haltech PD16 has four 25 amp current draws. So that's four big gauge wires, the high beam, low beam. Those are on their own separate big amp ones. And there's one spare. This fuel pump doesn't pull that many amps. So it's just on like a regular. The Haltech PDM is a 16 channel. So it's on the smaller side. It works for this car because it's got manual windows and no power mirrors and I don't have a radio, stuff like that. But I think ECU Masters goes up to like a 32 channel, I think. Which, you know, it depends on what you're trying to do. The biggest downside to the Haltech PDM in my opinion is you have to have a Haltech ECU. They communicate via each other. So you can't just run it by itself with say a Honda or a Link or whatever, whereas other PDMs will, will function as a standalone PDM, which if you look back on my cousin's car, the RB2, <clears throat> the RB240 we did two or three years ago now, that was a standalone PDM. It just worked by itself. It didn't need a Haltech soft or didn't need an Elite in order for it to work, which I don't necessarily like or dislike. I pretty much run Haltechs in all my cars, so it's not really a downside for me. But yeah, like that's, that's pretty much it. Like, especially on a car like this. When I started to look, and same with my cousin's car, when I started to look at the wiring, a lot of this wiring was gonna have to be repaired and it was, it was rough, to say the least. And a lot of it is factory redundancy. Like, like I said, you have multiple wires to run relays where you don't need to do that with this, you know? And it's just kind of, it really simplifies it. You know, there's significantly less wires. I mean, obviously the wires underneath the dash look terrible right now, but trust me, it's really not that much. In all reality, I, unless you're trying to make a, uh, super OEM, I don't even want to say it like that. Unless you, if you want all the amenities and you have, you know, seat heaters and stuff like that, I, I would definitely avoid doing a PDM. But in, in my opinion, pretty much any car I build that, it's probably gonna have a PDM in it, more or less. It's just, it's easier for diagnostics. It's easier for wiring. It simplifies everything. I hope that answers some of your guys' questions. Make sure you guys comment below if you have any more. Um, I'll, I reply to everyone I see, which is usually pretty 
regular, unless it, the video is super old, because sometimes they won't show up in my feed. Chances are uh, you're gonna be seeing another PDM video coming soon. Um, my buddy Derek FD is having some chassis harness problems, so we're gonna have to rewire that car, and we're trying to figure out how we wanna do it right now, because we're waiting to hear back on his ECU situation. So if you guys are looking forward to that, make sure you subscribe, and we'll see you next time.